Hey friends, in this video we're going to be drawing monarch butterflies inspired by the story Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. What you will need is a blue piece of construction paper, a pencil, thick black marker, and oil pastels. Please feel free to substitute your blue paper for white drawing paper and your oil pastels for chalk pastels, crayons, or even color pencils. This project focuses on symmetry, which means the same on both sides, as well as some blending of our yellow and orange colors. Let's get started. To draw this butterfly, I'm going to be using my eraser tracer trick. That way I don't have to worry about erasing lots of my pencil lines because this can be a little tricky. I want you to take your time and remember we are breaking down this butterfly into shapes and lines. You need to have patience, so be kind to yourself as you work and don't judge your artwork until it's all done. There's going to be some awkward moments where you're like, what am I doing? It's okay. It's in progress. I promise it'll be awesome when you're done. Why don't you grab your pencil? I'm going to start with mine, eraser side down. Now near the middle-ish of my page, so if I put my finger where I guess the middle of my page is here-ish, I'm going to put the head of my butterfly just a little north of that. So I'm going to start with a little circle, eraser tracer trick. I know that must be super hard. You can't even see what I did. See that tiny little spot there? But if you can see your eraser lines, add them. I'm going to add my pencil line next and erase. So I drew a tiny circle. I know that's super hard to see. Bear with me. Next, we're going to make a sort of oval shape for the middle part of our butterfly. Here we go. I'm going to do this. You can choose to do this with your eraser, but I feel confident in my ovals, so I'm just going to go for it. If you don't want to do the eraser tracer trick, don't. Do what feels comfortable for you. See that? I drew an oval-ish shape. Is it perfect? No. Our butterfly is perfect. I don't think so. Alrighty, let's add the edge of it. What is it called? Is it the, yeah, the head, the thorax, and the... No. Head, thorax, abdomen? Or is it the other way around? I don't even know. Google it. Okay, here we go. One more little circle. Think of a caterpillar body. Because remember, all butterflies were once caterpillars, right? Maybe they weren't. I don't know. I don't study bugs. <laughs> Alright, and before I finish, I'm going to add some an antenna here. And an antenna there with a little curvy diagonal line like that. Now, I know you must be like, I can't see a thing. The lighting's tough on this blue construction paper. But as long as you can see your lines, that's all that matters. At this point, I'm going to trace these with my Sharpie. This project we're going to do in parts just to make it a little easier. So grab your big marker trace that circle and the rest of your body of the fly then we're gonna go for the wings here we go okay it's your choice whether or not you color this in now i'm going to wait and i'm going to switch back to my pencil here i definitely want to use my eraser tracer trick because this is going to be a little tricky okay and when I say a little it might be a lot tricky maybe it won't be tricky at all but well, who knows what we're going to do is we're going to draw our wing outlines we've got four parts we've got the top two and the bottom two okay and notice the shape of those lines the line direction they're going diagonal up okay diagonal up. Get your hands used to the diagonal up one way, diagonal the other. Let yourself get ready. That's right. Grab that pencil and we're going to go from like right where the head and the body meet up and over. Can you see that a little bit? I doubt it. 
but I can. I can see the tiny little pink shades of my butterfly. Here's what it looks like in pencil. Diagonal line with a bit of a curve. Now, if you are feeling like a little frustrated with this eraser tracer trick because it's hard to see through the camera, don't do it. What I'm going to do is create another diagonal line. We're going to make our wings the same on both sides. That's called symmetry. Okay, here we go. Diagonal up in a little curve. Just like that. Not too bad, right? Right? All right, here's where it's gonna get tricky. I'm gonna do the middle part of the wing first and then we're gonna connect them. You might need to erase a little here, but it'll be fine, trust me. I'm gonna start about a finger away from my top diagonal line, okay? We're going slow. Here we go. And I'm gonna go horizontal like that. It, there's a slight slant to it, but it's not going to go as far. Notice I'm not drawing anything yet. I'm guessing. Eraser tracer trick would be like this. Wha bam Add the pencil line. Notice it's a little shorter than this top line. <laughs> See it there? Same thing. Make that line. I'm even going to put my finger here so I know where to stop so it's similar. Horizontal with a little slant. Okay, not bad. All you have to do is, woo, my Sharpie went a flying. All you have to do is connect these. Now you can do this with a straight line, but if you want to add a touch of a curve, here's how you do it. Curve in and out. Imagine a little S that's been squooshed. Let's try that over here. Curve in and out. See that? It's tricky. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. You could make this video too. It's not easy, and I've practiced this before. Take your time. It's cool beans. Let's do the bottom wings, because those are a little easier, right? We're going to start another finger away so finger distance finger distance and i'm going to put my finger here i'm going to make a vertical line down but it's a little slanted now okay so there we go one two one to two here we go if you even want to put a little dot there so you know where to stop you can vertical down with a little slant well, that wasn't too bad we're going to do the same thing on this side and if you want Add the dot, finger distance from your last line, vertical down. Not too shabby. Now, notice this bottom shape here on our butterfly. It's just a curve. So we're going to start near the edge of our butterfly. I guess my Sharpie should move over here. There you go, Sharpie. Sit still. There we go. All righty one here so we're about maybe a finger from the edge and all we're going to do is curve here's where i like to use my eraser how's that can you see that little let me show you if i get a little light on that see how the eraser tracer trick works the eraser tracer trick can be tricky on camera so do your best and if you're like i'm not doing that coach t you don't have to do what works for you this is just a strategy that works for me. There we go. Another curve. And I'm ready to draw. I'm ready to trace my eraser lines. Gently. Always use a gentle touch when you're using pencil. That way, if you must erase, you can do it more easily. All right. Let's get rid of these fuzzies. My friends, we've made the outline of the butterfly. We can actually get rid of our pencil if we want to, but if you want to keep it nearby to draw the inside shapes, that's cool beans. Okay, I'm gonna trace my outer wings. Here we go. Not bad. 
Now, if any friends are getting a little hung up on this little curve I put here on the top wings, feel free to just make it a straight line down. That is totally an option. This is a subtle extra little oomph I gave it just because I wanted to do it. But if you're having trouble with this little curve here, give yourself grace, give yourself a break, and just connect it with a regular um, straight line. It'll still look fabulous. I'm going to pause my use of my marker for another moment, and I decided I'm going to go back to my pencil just so we're all on the same page. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the inside patterns. These are going to be oval-ish, rectangular-ish, rhombus-ish shapes, okay? They don't have to be perfect. What we're going for here is symmetry, though. We want our shapes to be the same-ish on both sides. So let's scoot that Sharpie over here. And I'm going to start with this pattern on this side of the wing. Now I'm going to make a big oval here because this shape over here looks like a big oval to me. Here we go. Ready? Regular oval. Oval here. Great. But I did one over there. So I need to do the same thing on this side. Remember, symmetry. Same on both sides. And there you have it. Just an oval. That's just a circle. That's just an oval, just a diagonal line and a curvy line and a vertical line. They're just simple lines and shapes, my friends. Always break down your drawings into simple lines and shapes and it will be much easier. Alrighty, let's keep going with these patterns. Now, over here on this wing, I see these rectangular oval-ish shapes. I see a small, medium, and large. Let's try it out. I think I'm gonna start with my large shape first. It's almost like a sidewaysy U, okay? Let's go this way. And before I get to the edge down, it looks like a soft rectangle, but I'm gonna go all the way over here like that. If you just wanna draw a regular oval, go for it. Let's try that again over here. I think I'm gonna go the opposite way, down and around like that these are the wonkiest shapes if you just want to make some ovals make some ovals it's gonna be fine i promise okay let's keep going same shape smaller size we'll go down across up and over same thing over here down across, up, and over. Don't get hung up on the shapes. It shouldn't look just like mine. You are not me. I am not you. Our shapes are going to look different. Feel free to just say, I'm going for ovals, coach. That's it. This works for me. I support you. Got it? Got it? Got it. Got it. That's right. Let's add our big oval shapes to the bottom, and then we will go and add our white accents. Now, let's see here. I'm going to do a big oval here. Right down the middle. One more over here. Are they exactly the same? No. Is that fine? Yes. All right, one more. I'm going to do this right up against the side. Boop. And this one's a little smooshed. That's okay, right? Of course. We're just going to draw little ovals all the way around. One here. Little one there. And one, two. All right, I'll go over here. One. Two. All right, another one up here. Oop, but I got to smoosh it. You got this. I'm gonna do one more here instead of two. Because that's just the way it worked out. And that's okay. Right? Yeah. Alrighty. Let's make the smaller circles. Now, all the circles I make are gonna be the white spots. So I'm gonna do one, 
two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. Notice, symmetry. Over here, I can't keep track of it as well, so I'm just gonna do my best and go all the way down. Circles line the wings, and you can get a little smaller if you want to as you go down the wing. You can even add another layer inside. Okay, how are we feeling? I think I can add a few more here. One, two, three, I'll add one, two, three over here. Oh yeah, pretty good. Now this was the hardest part. The next part isn't hard, it just takes patience. What we are going to do is we are going to outline all of these shapes in Sharpie. I want you to take a break, take a breath, and come back to this part when you are ready. Some friends may have gotten frustrated with the oval-ish shapes. That's okay. It doesn't have to look perfect, right? But I'm gonna go for it and just trace my shapes. Okay, now that all of my shapes have been traced, we have one more job to do before we add our special orange and yellow highlights. We need to take our marker and color the spaces between our shapes. If you scribble, it's gonna show. If you go slow and steady, your monarch butterfly will look super crisp and clean. So take your time, small sections at once. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Let's see, do little stripes, small shapes, go slow. Small spaces rather, not shapes, okay? Those little in-betweens, if you rush, you're gonna regret it a little bit, you might regret it. You've gotten this far. Give your butterfly your patience, just like the caterpillar has to be patient before its wings come after settling in the cocoon. I find it useful to go in little circular motions instead of scribble, scrabble, back and forth motions. That way, I don't accidentally cover my shapes. If you accidentally color in one of your shapes, don't worry at all. Your pastels will make them pop again. Phew, all done. Now I know that I fast forwarded through that section, but in real time, that took me about five to seven minutes, which is pretty like decent if you're counting the minutes, you know what I mean? It should never feel rushed. Your process shouldn't be about how fast you can go. It should be about the effort and the care that you take with your art making. Put on your favorite song, have a fun TV show in the background that you can listen to as you create my young artists. The time will go a little faster, but don't think to yourself, oh man, I have so much to do. Just take it one area at a time, and if you need to take a break and come back, do that. You're allowed to do that, but I hope you are ready because we are going to move on to the fun part. We're adding the orange and yellow. You have a couple of choices here. You can start directly with your orange, or you can start directly with your yellow. I'm gonna swip, woo! I am going to swap. We're gonna see what happens, so I'll leave my yellow up here. And really gently, 
Just color in the big shapes. Leave the outer circles empty. Those will be white. Here we go. Smooth, velvety pressure. Try to stay inside your lines, but it's okay if they go outside the lines because these are natural beings. These are natural shapes, organic. Look how nice and bold that is. Woo! Let's do the other side. Remember, same on both sides. Symmetry. It's a fun word to say, symmetry. Now, do you notice that the wings on top look a little darker than the wings on the bottom. I'm gonna try if I can replicate that before I add my yellow up here for some blended technique. I'm gonna add my yellow to the bottom first and see what happens. Ooh, lovely. Now, of course, yellow on top of blue, you're gonna get a greenish hue. If you want to avoid that, you could try, and I don't know how this will work out, but why not experiment? You could try adding a little bit of white, a little layer, and then going over it with your yellow. Did I say that right? Add your white, then add your yellow. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Or you could try a little bit of pink of this peachy color, and then add your yellow, just so the yellow and blue, ooh, that might be the way to go. Oh, problem solving in front of you, my friends. I love it. I'm gonna do that again over here. I'm gonna add some peach, peach, but I want them to be the same. So I'm not gonna add them to the other two. I'm gonna add this here. And then add my yellow over here. Notice the slight difference. It's very slight. I'm being particular here, people. Do what you will at this point. But I love the look of this little peach first, then the yellow. And don't worry, I'm not done yet. Gonna add one more layer of yellow. Oh, look how creamy that yellow looks now. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now I am ready to add a little bit of yellow up top here. It's gonna be subtle, but it will be there. Real gentle and subtle. Barely there, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's all gross, go ahead and get yourself a scrap piece of paper and wipe it through. Got it, got it. Got it, got it. All right. You could even just wipe it on the back side of your paper if you want, but careful of the table underneath. I'm gonna now add a little bit of orange to the bottom. Notice the difference. What happens when you add the dark on top of the light? And I'm doing this very gently. Mmm. Oh, look at those magical blended colors, that yellow orange. Oof, reminds me of macaroni and cheese. No, I'm hungry. Pretty nice. Now, if some of you are saying, oh man, but my top is so much darker, I wish it were just a little lighter, grab that peach. Let's see what happens if we add a little peach. That lightens it up a bit. Oh, I think that's fabulous, look at that. See, a little bit of experimentation can go a long way. Fabulous. Notice I'm not going all the way across. Just some light blending. Hmm? Yeah. Or as I say to my students in class a lot, yes. Mm hmm. My friends, I think I am all set with my orange. Time to add the final bits of white. And don't worry, we're going to add the black interior to our butterfly. Last. Let's get rid of some of these crusties though. Good. Always tap and flick your crusties. Don't smear. 
flick because you'll get a that. Here we go. All you're going to do is fill in all the extra little spots with white. Easy peasy. Now, if you notice on this butterfly, there are these outlines of white on the outside. This is an optional step, but if you want to add it, you're going to add just little dots, like a dotted line right on the edge. This is totally optional, but I like the way it makes my butterfly pop, pop, pop. Imagine the little lines in the street, those little dotted lines, kind of like that all the way down your wings. Last side. Fabulous. And if you want to go back in and add a few more details, you may just remember to keep the symmetry going. Alrighty, let's add the final black of our butterfly. I like to make the body that velvety smooth texture of the pastel. So there we go, got the head. Be gentle here, because you don't want to smoosh everything, okay? So be mindful. If you want, you can grab a piece of paper, a scrap piece, put it here, so you're not resting your hand directly. I'm kind of floating my hand up, but I've got to be mindful of where my, um, the side of my hand is, so I don't smoosh the rest of my artwork. Beautiful. And if you want to make it so those pieces look a little more separate or add some eyeball reflections, you could add a little more white to either side. You could add a little white outline really barely there. See that? Barely there. You could even rub it in a bit, but careful there. A little around. Barely touching this, friends. Barely. Okay? It's just a little pop of reflection. And there you have it, my friends. A glorious monarch butterfly. Take your time, be patient, and happy creating. Mm -hmm.